If you've ever upgraded your hard drive before, you know how tedious it can be to reinstall your operating system. Today I'm going to show you how to use Clonezilla to clone your hard drive so you don't need to reinstall Windows. Make sure when cloning your hard drive that the destination drive is equal to or larger than the source. We're looking for the live version of Clonezilla, so go ahead and download that and click on the ISO image here. We're also going to be downloading the stable version, so go ahead and click that. You can use the alternative version based on Ubuntu if you prefer. This software will work with cloning any drive including Mac or any Linux based systems. Make sure you select the 64-bit version and select the ISO image. I'm going to use the Source Forge to download it as it's a lot quicker for me. Give that a couple seconds and the download should pop up. It shouldn't take very long to download as it's a small file. Once the ISO image is done downloading, open up your downloads folder and make sure it's in there. Since we need to mount this to a USB drive, we're going to have to download some software for that. You can either use Rufus or Belena Etcher. For this tutorial though, I'm going to download Belena Etcher. Doing a quick Google search should show up at the main website here, or you can click on the link in the description below. I'm going to download the installer version here, so just go ahead and click on that. You can also download the portable one if you don't want to install it on your operating system. It should only take a few seconds, but go ahead and proceed through the installer. With Belena Etcher up, we can go ahead and flash from a file, then select the ISO image that we downloaded previously. We need to select the disk that we want to flash it to next. I'm using a micro SD card in a micro SD card reader, so I'm going to go ahead and select that now. With both the image file and the disk selected, all we have left to do is to go ahead and flash that. So go ahead and do that now. This may take a little bit depending on the disk that you're using. This little 64GB Samsung SD card seems to do a pretty good job. Shut down your computer and when it's starting up, tap the delete key to bring up the BIOS menu. Your BIOS might look a little different than mine, but just head over to the boot menu and make sure that that USB drive that we flashed the image to is set as the boot option number one. Make sure to save and exit your BIOS. Mine is F4, but yours might be slightly different. The computer will then proceed to shut down and restart, booting into the USB drive that we just created. Go ahead and select the first option on this menu here. This next part should take a couple seconds to boot up as it needs to boot from the USB drive directly. Once it loads everything in, all we have to do is select our language and proceed through the install. Keep your default keyboard layout and go ahead and start Clonezilla. There are a couple options on this next menu, but what we want to do is go from a disk to another disk, so go ahead and select that option now. Clonezilla will then proceed to scan all the disks. Make absolutely sure that you're selecting the correct disks when we go through this menu here. Go ahead and select the beginner mode. This will give us a simple and straightforward interface to work with. Select local disk to local disk clone. After it's finished scanning, make sure you go ahead and select the first disk as your source. Then after that, all you have to do is select your target disk. Be extremely careful here that you only select the disk that you want to clone it to. It will override anything on the disk that you're selecting. If your computer or your disk has been a little wonky, you might want to go ahead and select auto here as it'll try to repair it before cloning. If the disk in question hasn't been giving you any issues, you can go ahead and skip checking here and proceed to the next step. Use the partition table from the source disk to get a one-to-one -one copy of the original. If you're cloning your operating system disk, go ahead and select the option to shut down after it's finished so you can swap the disk out with your new one. Press enter to continue and it'll go ahead with one final prompt if you want to go ahead and clone the disk. Say yes to both of the prompts and it'll proceed to finally cloning your two disks. Depending on the source and the target disk, this can take quite a while depending on how much data it has to sort through and what type of drive you're using. I'm cloning between an NVMe to another NVMe so this is a really quick clone but it can take a little while as mentioned depending on what kind of drives you're cloning. Make sure to use the fastest connections available when you're cloning your drives so it doesn't take as long. If you want to upgrade any of your disks to a larger one, this is a great way to do that as you won't lose your data when using this. Let's hop over to Windows next and see how that disk cloned. As you can see, the two disks are carbon copies of each other, so it worked perfectly. If you want to set that disk as online so you can access it in Windows, just right click on the disk 2 off to the left and make sure you set it to online. Then it should pop up in Windows. As always, if you have any questions, make sure to ask in the comments below. 